Being raised by women taught me that I don't need men in my life and I don't need them to tell me what to do. I felt that I needed to show women like that in my work and just show positive uh, visual representation of black women. But then also making it known that it's just my part of the bigger narrative because there's so many different narratives and ways to be black. This is just my story. My name is Jamila Okubo, and I'm a mixed media artist, illustrator, and surface pattern designer. This is an affordable sharing studio space. I basically share my like actual studio space with one artist, and then we have a bunch of like studio neighbors inside. So. I was in sixth grade when I really knew that I wanted to take art seriously. I was raised in D.C. My dad, he's Kenyan, Trinidadian. My mom and dad got divorced when I was like really young. My dad, he was here for a, a little while in the States, but then he moved back to Kenya and started a life there. And then the first time that I got to hang, hang out with him, I think I was like 13. And I think he just wanted to make an impression on me. And so he showed up to my mom's house and he had on like some sort of like Maasai warrior like fabric. And me being a teenager, I was just like, no, you have to go home and change because I'm not going to the mall with you like that. I became more curious about uh, my dad's side of the family and culture, really. Just, I really wanted to know more in high school. I would say it was when I transferred to Duke Ellington. That's an um, art school in D.C. And that was my first introduction to like contemporary black art. And I was like, oh, like I can make art that's about me or like about where I'm from or if I want to say something. So I started to reach out to my uncle and I was like, can you like tell me more about conga fabrics? And then he sent me some. And then I just like got bold and like added my dad on Facebook and started asking him a lot of questions about the culture and stuff like that. In July last summer, I went to Kenya for the first time to like spend time with my dad and meet my relatives and like other siblings. It was just like a really exciting and emotional trip because it's like they all know who I am and it's like they welcomed me like it was like a welcome back home. When I came back, I felt connected um, to my father's side of the family and just to Kenya in general. I started wanting to use the format of a conga fabric as a platform to weave in the stories of my cultural narrative, where my mom and my grandmother come from, with also like where my dad's side of the family comes from. It's crazy to like be back home and like this is like the neighborhood that I grew up in. Like I grew up in my grandma's house. And like now it's like she's able to see everything that I've like accomplished. Hi grandma. Hey, how are you? I'm okay. All of my works from college and we just put them up on the fences in, our, in the backyard and had like a mini showing of my work from school. See, that's me in the corner cheesing really hard. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so funny. Then I also saw the strength in some of the, you know, things that I learned about like where my family came from. For example, like my grandmother, she would always tell me about stories of her growing up picking cotton to see where I am now at this age and like where she came from, it's like a big deal and it's something that I take with me wherever.
My mom, she was a single mom and she raised me and then also had my brother and sister. When I grew up with my mom, she was in a domestic violence um, relationship. So I used to see a lot of violence growing up. Even through all of what we went through, she still made sure to like nurture what I wanted to pursue. And I think that even fueled the fire more for me to represent strong black women. I have a lot of respect for my mom and my grandmother and the sacrifices that they've went through. And I know a lot of other women who also have gone through so much, even like, you know, all over the world. So it's just, I think it's just really important to push that narrative. A lot of hard work that's gonna, you know, it's paid off, you know, all the hard work, all the sacrificing, you know, and we couldn't have done it, of course, without my mom, she was a huge help. You know, she spoiled Jamila rotten. So, <laughs> so she got her started on the fashion tip yeah. <laughs> early. So, And um, I supplied her with all the art and the education aspect. So, so we, it was a team, it was a team effort. It's when she was tiny, you know, she was just like a little, I don't know, a butterfly, just going everywhere and doing everything, you know, and uh, we just hit it off really good. Since I had moved back, I was slowly like working on building work and creating and getting all of these different opportunities. So to have finally secured like my first solo exhibition back home as like my first one, um, it's just really an honor. focusing a lot on African proverbs and African American folk tales. A lot of people don't know that I'm the artist because I'm like really young, so I'm just like, they're like, oh, you're the artist. I've always dreamed of like having my work like in a gallery or like in a space like this, but I don't think I ever thought about like what I wanted from that, except of course representation and like being able to tell my own story. So like seeing people, strangers, just take it in and it's like amazing. Especially for my grandmother to be here, because a, a lot of the works, especially my earlier works, were inspired by her and stories that she has told me. With art specifically, which I've learned, no matter what kind of day you're having, whether it's bad or good, like keep making work. Hi everyone, I'm Sari, the producer of Her Stories. Click here to watch more episodes, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and leave us a comment letting us know what other people and topics you want to see on the show. And make sure to subscribe to Now This Her. Thanks for watching.